This was a Sopwith tripe, I believe. And uh, it had no place in the winds that were blowing out there. A rudder elevator and immense amount of every kind of thing that'll blow it all over the place. It needs to be flown in dead calm. There's a TTPW of Bob Heiss's. And this is, this is Bob Doel's JD-1, which was a Navy version of the A-26. And here they're cranking up, while well, they were cranking up the PBY. And here is the P-38 of Breitling's. And uh, here's the P-38 going and going and going and not going. He rolled the front tire off of here. And uh, he had a horrible time. He, I think he tipped both engines and they were running wild. Here's the tripe. You could say he's having a difficult time. Somebody with a Bolex there taking pictures. Motion picture camera. And milk it, milk it until you stall it out. And here goes the PBY. And Dick Riggs was flying it. And already it's got a wing low. And he goes up. And he goes up, and it's it's mean, it's miserable, it's hard. Okay, here's Bob Doel's JD-1. This thing had two Vicos in it, and what it did, and it had F&M uh, reeds, and what he had is centrifugal uh, electrical clutch-like arrangements on his prop shafts. And if one engine quit, it automatically cut the other. So it was like any single-engine airplane. You lost an engine, you lost both. So he wasn't worried about spinning or yawing or snap rolling. If you lost an engine, you dead sticked it. That's all there was to it. And uh, the electric boys would like to say, we don't have that problem with electrics. Anyway, this airplane later on won at the Nationals. I think it won here this that day in scale too. It was very nice and glossy and shiny outside, beautiful and all that good stuff. But uh, the... Uh, there were no internal details at all, and uh, you just looked in, and there was the, there was the radio, and there was no no pilot, no instrument panels, and there was no nothing, just bare balsa wood. You know, here is, here's the PBY. After the crash, and the pieces, and uh, I think it was Frank Johnson's, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, here we are with a shot of the line. and people, and here's the JD-1 up close. The outer wing panels were held on, they were slid on to concentric stuff, and uh, the outer wing panels were outer wing panels, and I think they used square tubing from somebody, square brass tubing, and he, oh, that's Dale Root. He always has to clown for the camera. And anyway, uh, he held the, the wing panels on with a transparent tape. Just plug them in and hold them on with transparent tape, no screws, no bolts, it seemed to work fine. Here's somebody's Sultan. This was a Hayes airplane of Kraft Hayes. Gorgeous thing, absolutely gorgeous. And uh, of course he didn't work with Kraft at that time. He was making reed banks and stuff. Medco reed banks, Medco power packs. That was the impound area. That was uh, Ray Downs carrying out his Sultan to the flight line. You can see the Lark's patch on his back. And Edie Downs, his wife, used to cover and paint all of his airplanes for him. That thing you saw there was the Lark's headquarters. This is Vic Hughes ex King Alt Altair. And Vic built beautiful airplanes. And Vic used to build it in Bill Northrop there in the center picture. And here he is, here's Vic Hughes ex King Altair. And I see he was, he built the models that they used to put on this for color photographs on the uh, on top flight kit covers. So if you saw a beautiful airplane, that was his, not necessarily Kasmerski's. This is Dick Riggs flying his, his uh, Kawasaki Hine at Mile Square practice field, a way display models that they would go in. I think this is, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the guy's name. It was a modified qualifier. That's Don Brown from the Nats. And uh, he's flying the thing. He did not enter it in competition. He just flew it out here at uh, the quarter horse track. I mean, not the quarter horse, but at, uh, at a Mile Square. And uh, just flew it for fun and didn't enter the contest. Here's Breitling's P-38. 
and it's going to be flown in the contest, but he wanted to have a test flight out here because he'd done some modifications. This is Bill Williams' Dominator, swept wing aircraft, and here goes the test flight for the P-38. Notice the rear wheels, they lift off the ground, the nose gear's still on, and Dick Riggs is test flying it, and Dick Riggs is test flying it, test flying it, test flying, test flying, test crashing, and that Here we are with Doc Good's airplane, real thick wing, we are using two-stick Orbitrol. It was black flagged because they splattered terribly in the spectrum. This is Carl Goldberg with a twin-engine Skylark that he was showing off to the world. Up until then, it was just a single-engine airplane and kit. Now here's the two-engine two kit. That's Carl Goldberg. Great gentleman. And here's Daryl Usher and, and uh, Dale Root talking in the shade. And Dale hasn't seen the camera yet, otherwise he'd be talking to me. This is what happened to Vic Husek's airplane. Uh, Vic later became a member of the Pioneer Club of Sunnyvale, and I knew him from there. And I'd see him at the flying field and at the meetings. Nobody paid any attention to him. He was like me. This is a misbehaving from the kit. Beautiful airplane, too much wing. Beautiful airplane. This is Pappy DeBolt with his interceptor, the first one. Space, uh, space control in the airplane. And here he's going out for a flight. Gorgeous airplane. It flew like a dream. This is Larry Beeson, my old buddy from Dover, with his flat top stormer, with his wife calling as usual. This is the 63 Nats. There's the Tacan station, Vortac, I should say. His wife dancing around him doing his calling. You see, saw that funny looking thing over there, that black thing? This is Willie Smith's Torero. See that black thing on the ground? That's a big anchor chain they use for the arresting gear. And you notice the EBRC uh, flag there, EBRC, East Bay Radio Controllers from San Francisco. This is Maynard Hill, and he is flying Sampy, and calling for him was Jim Kirkland. Jim is carrying the airplane. Jim is going to end up first place uh, in this contest. Maynard had flaps and everything else on this bird. And Maynard loved flaps, and that's a sampy that you see that he's, that he's uh, holding from his hand. But the receiver was not the superhead. It was a six-meter regen. This is Lou Proctor's Antic, flying it in scale. And I don't know why anybody ever called that scale. It looks World War I, but it isn't scale of anything. It's just features. And here it is, the antic. Uh, you saw Lou out of the field, just a bare glimpse as he landed in the airplane. And here's some guys at the ready line. I think that was Al Diem walking by there, I'm not sure. And here's Clarence Lee calling for the gentleman from the Larks. Clarence Lee, the engine man. And there's Dick Riggs with his symbol on the back of his orange shirt. Dick died of Hodgkin's disease, and he worked as a tech for Orbit, and he was a great guy. You notice he, his Kawasaki was not there. This is Joe Murphy's Corsair. And this is Joe Murphy's Corsair ending. Now here's Doc Brooks taxiing out with his airplane. And it's got Orbitrol, two sticks which was a orbitized space control. And the guy that's calling for him is Milt Boone. This is Don Brown's ambassador with his DB4, or DV Don Brown Quadriflex, or what it was, uh, ticky tick uh, pulse system, proportional system. This is Chuck, Chuck Boyer with his trimotor trimotor. And there it is ending up. He broke a wing in flight. This is Claude McCullough's C-125 uh, scale ship. This was a Northrop C-125. And they built a few of these things, and they flew them. They were based upon the old uh, Ford Trimotor and other things. This is a pusher prop uh, rendition of a Vigilante Delta Wing. And here's Lou Proctor's Antic with the things folded, and his bolero with the, with the number eight on it behind it. This is the bolero 
with the small vertical stabilizer. In the plans, they showed a larger vertical stabilizer. Here's Larry Beeson with his flat top stormer. I don't know why he doffed his hat. There, seeing the DB in the background on Brown's ship. This was uh, Granger Williams' Newport, and he broke that fuselage in two and put it back together again, and you couldn't tell it. And he won. This is Daryl Usher's F9, and one of Root's airplanes behind it, or somebody that built one like Root. That's a Root design. Daryl Usher's swept, uh, kind of swept wing, sort of uh, F9. This is one of the guys from, this might be a beatnik. This is uh, Tom Mahon, Lieutenant Colonel, retired, or Lieutenant Colonel. He flew General White around the Pacific in an aircraft called Batan II, which was MacArthur's baby Connie. And he flew General White, who was commander of the Pacific Forces. He flew out a special mission squadron at Hickam Air Force Base. And here's some other airplanes and more airplanes. And that's Lloyd Sager's uh, Astro Hog there. And Lloyd Sager was the guy that got everybody interested in Burns trim pot, burn trim pot wire bound pots for proportional units, the ones that used to fail all the time. And uh, But he was the guy that got convinced Bonner and those guys to put these wire wound pots in their rigs and other people to put wire wound pots. This is Jim Kirkland's airplane. This is the airplane on Sampy that won first place at this contest. Jim Kirkland and his beachcomber. Single stick, four channel analog proportional from Sampy of Orlando, Florida. You barely saw Jim there. This was not one of his better flights. This is, this is Pappy DeBolt, and he's going to be looking for that anchor chain in a moment, and here he finds it. He lands right on top of it. Ooh, ouch, hurt. Anyway, here's the, some of the ready line, and there's the gold rush of Keith Stories, which won first place in pop.